Hello everybody and welcome back to part 3 of ranking the Carry On films. This is the final part and I'm going to be ranking the last 6 Carry On films. This was a little bit easier because there's only 6 films here as opposed to 12 because I ranked 12 movies in the previous two videos and this one there's only 6. And they were easy to rank as well because most of the ones in from this era are my least favourites ones that are not that great. There are some great ones here. So this one's a bit half and half. I didn't even need to write this one down because I just remember remember this off by heart. Uh, I've already filmed part two and I'm, it's actually uploading right now on my uh, computer as we speak. So without any further further delay Let's do this. So number six is Carry On Columbus from 1992. Uh, it's a bit, it's a bit of a poor film, if I'm honest. Um, it's got its moments, you know. There are some, there are funny moments in it. There's some good cast. You know, you've got Jim Dale. Jim Dale comes back for this one. It's good to see him back. Bernard, Cri Bernard Cribbins. Uh, Leslie Phillips, June Whitfield, uh, Jack Douglas is in this one. Uh, so yeah, it's got some of the uh, original stars in it, but there's a lot of new ones here. You've got Julian Clary, I think. I think he was funny, to be honest. Uh, Rick Mayall is in it. Uh, Alexi Sale, Nigel Planer. You know, I love the young ones, so it's good that they're in it. But Richard Wilson, who was, who was obviously Victor Meldrew from One Foot in the Grave, he's in this one. So yeah, it's got a, it's got a strong cast. But yeah, the it's just not a very strong film in my opinion. But I don't dislike the film. It has funny moments, like um. The joke about the serial killer. I mean, it's a very, it's a very cheesy joke, really. Um, yeah, it's a joke that Julian Clary says he introduces he introduces this character called Marco the serial killer, but it's serial as in breakfast cereal. He says this is Marco the serial killer. He beats his victims to death with sacks of Rice Krispies. <laughs> I mean, it's it's a cheesy joke, but it's it's funny as far as I'm concerned. But yeah, this came out in 1992, so this came out uh, 14 years after Carry On Emanuel, which was the last film of the original run. So this was like a revival of the series, and um, it didn't work. You know, I think, because this kind of humour, it had moved on long before this point. But yeah, I, I, don't, I don't watch this very often, but... I'd be lying if I said it wasn't at least a little bit entertaining. I really wish that Rick Mayall had been in the whole film. He only has a cameo at the beginning. I wish that he could have been in the whole film. But, like I say, it has its moments. So that's number six. And this is the only one that's not included in any of these sets. And then the next five ones are all in this set. This is Volume th Ultimate Collection Volume 3. So these are all the ones from 1973 to 1978. But yeah, Columbus isn't in any of these sets. So you have to buy that separately. Which I didn't mind. You know, I am a bit of a completist when it comes to the carry-on films. Because I, lo I love them. Number five, I went with um, Carry On England from 1976. Uh, so this is the World War Two carry on film. I mean, making a World War Two carry on film, it's a good idea because it had never been done before this. But my main problem with this film is it just lacks a lot of the major stars. You know, there's no Sid James. Sid James had sadly passed away before this film went into production, and I kind of think they should have stopped making carry on films once Sid passed. Because to me, to me, he was the king of the carry-on films. And, you know, they were never the same after he passed. And 
and yeah, Kenneth Williams is not in it either. So this is the first Carry On film that doesn't feature neither Sid James nor Kenneth Williams. Yeah, it's got Kenneth Connor in it. He's pretty good. Uh, Joan Sims and Peter Butterworth have smaller roles in the film. But Kenneth Connor and Jack Douglas appear throughout. And you've got other good actors in here. You've got Windsor Davis, who's brilliant. He's basically playing the Sergeant Major. It's basically the same character that he plays in It Ain't Our Fault, Mum. Well, the character has a different name in this film, but apart from the name, it's pretty much the same character. So yeah, he's he's brilliant. I love Windsor Davis. Uh, you've got Patrick Mower in the film, who... He's a great actor, but I just wasn't sure if he was the right choice to appear in a carry-on film. Like, I like him as a more serious actor. Like, he's in, he's been in some, like, horror films from the 60s and 70s. Most notably, he was in the Hammer film, The Devil Rides Out, with uh, Christopher Lee. I think that was his first major film. So, yeah, he's in this one. But, yeah, he's just, he's just, I don't think he's funny. He's a good actor, but I don't think he's right for comedy. And you've got Melvin Hayes in here as well, who was also in It Ain't, it Ain't Our Fault, Mum. And again, here he's playing pretty much the same character that he played in that show, but just under a different name. So yeah, he's pretty funny. But yeah, I'm just missing, it's just missing like a lot of the other main carry-on stars. And it does have funny moments, but it's not one that I reach for very often when I want to put on a carry-on film. That's number five. Number <clears throat> number four, I went with Carry On Emmanuel, which is the one after Carry On England. Um, <clears throat> this one really is what it is. It is the worst film, but I ranked it. <clears throat> but I ranked it above Carry On England just based on the fact that this one has Kenneth Williams in it, and Carry On England doesn't. <sighs> But yeah, it's not that much of a better film. I think, I think story-wise, this this is the worst one. It's just, I mean, it's got, I mean, the few regulars that are in it, they're not even enough to make the film good. It's just, there's just not enough to save the film. I mean, this film is basically a parody on, like, the Confessions films, which were like. Uh, sex comedies that were made in the late 70s because they were very popular at this time so i think what they were trying to do was they were trying to move with the times but it, it just didn't work for the carry-on films but i understand comedy was changing at this point and they were trying to yeah they were trying to sex them up a little bit and it, it ruined the franchise to be honest i mean yeah they were saucy they had innuendos but Carry On Emmanuel is, it is pretty much a sex comedy. It's like the Confessions films. And I've got nothing against the Confessions film. I haven't seen, I've only seen Confessions from, of a holiday camp. And I quite enjoyed it. But, you know, I, I'd rather watch the Carry On films, to be honest. But yeah, and I kind of feel sorry for Kenneth Williams, because he didn't want to do this film. And I don't blame him. He looked at the script and said, I'm not doing this. Yeah, I can under I can understand why he didn't want to do this, but he did this out of loyalty to his friends and I think to his fans as well. And I think he also did it for the money. Because I don't know if I mentioned this. Kenneth Williams was actually, uh, yeah, he didn't actually like the Carry On films, but he just did it for the money, which is surprising considering he appeared in twenty five of the Carry On films, twenty five out of the thirty films. Yeah, he didn't. He didn't. He didn't. He didn't really like him all that much. And yeah, you got Kenneth Connor in the films, where Peter Butterworth, Joan Sims, but they do appear throughout the film, but they don't really get a lot to do. And yeah, this was the last film to feature those actors. So yeah, I mean, it has its moments, but it just doesn't feel like a carry-on film. It just feels more like a confessions film to me. That's number f so that's number four. Now the last, so the top three now. These one, these ones are actually good ones. Number three, I went with Carry On Dick from nineteen seventy four. 
Um, this is another historical one. This is the one about uh, uh, High Women, Dick Turpin. And this one's great because this one's got Sid James in it, and this was unfortunately Sid James's last Carry On film before his death two years later. But yeah, he's absolutely brilliant in this. You got pretty much all the gang are in. This is actually it is the last one to feature pretty much all the main cast with the exceptions of Charles Hawtrey and Jim Dale but apart from that everybody else is there you've got Kenneth Williams you've got Bernard Breslau you've got Barbara Windsor Hattie Jakes you know they're all there and yeah this it's, it's very risque like because in the film they nickname him Big Dick so yeah that's kind of a running joke throughout the film and yeah it's just so hilarious but yeah, I do love Carry On Dick. It's it's not a favourite Carry On film of mine, but... And it's also the last one to be scripted by Torbert Rothwell. So yeah, he didn't write any more after this. So this this is kind of what's considered to be the last true Carry On film by most fans. It's because it's the end of the golden era. You know, it's the last one with Sid James. It's also the last one with Hattie Jakes as well. And the last one with Barbara Windsor. So yeah, a bit of an end of an era there, but it's a good film. And then at number two, I went with Carry On Girls, from 1973. Uh, I love this one, uh, the beauty contest. It's a very, it's a very strong story. And you can also call this film like a. It's basically like a message on like women's rights. And I think I think it's done so well. You've got June Whitfield, who's like the she's like the feminist, and she's like fighting for the uh, women's rights in the film. And yeah, she plays the part so well. I think this is her best performance. She only appeared in like three or four Carry On films, but out of all her performances, I'd say this is this is her best. And you've got Sid James in the film. You've got Barbara Windsor. Uh, you haven't got, there's no Kenneth Williams or Charles Hawtrey in this one, sadly. I mean, that was, the, when I first saw this film, I kind of was disappointed. Because I was, like, before seeing this film for the first time, I was actually looking forward to watching this one, because I hadn't seen it before. But then when I did see it for the first time, I was kind of disappointed that Kenneth Williams wasn't in it. But at least it's still got Sid. Yeah, apparently they wanted, uh, Kenneth Williams in the film, but he wasn't available. But no, it's still it's still a great film. And then number one, I went with Carry On Behind from 1975. And it's the first one to be scripted, not to be scripted by Talbot Rothwell. But in my opinion, this is actually a really overlooked gem. Um, I actually do consider this to be the last truly great carry-on film. A lot of people see it as just like a, an inferior remake of Carry On Camping. And it is like Carry On Camping, cause, but it's with caravans instead of tents. So it takes place on a caravan site. But I love this movie. I mean, it's, it's missing some major stars. It's missing Sid James. There's no Barbara Windsor, no Charles Hawtrey, no Hattie Jakes. It's got Kenneth Williams in it still. It's got Bernard Breslau. It's got Kenneth Connor. You've got Joan Sims, Peter Butterworth, Jack Douglas as well. And you've got Windsor Davis in here as well. Because apparently yeah, Sid James was originally supposed to appear in this film, but he was he was away touring in Australia with a, a stage play. So that's why we've got Windsor Davis in the film. He's basically playing the Sid the Sid, the Sid James role and he doesn't do too bad of a job to be honest he's like playing basically the dirty old man type of character and yeah I love the uh, sort of like the duo with him and and Jack Douglas they play like best mates so yeah I, I really like this one I have a lot of nostalgia for this one I think that's probably why I love this one so much because I actually remember when I my first time watching this one so yeah, so <clears throat> that's my ranking of the Carry On films completed. 
And as you can see on this set, it also has that carry-on. I didn't include that one in the ranking because it's not a proper film. It's a, it's just a compilation of clips from other carry-on films that's that's uh, presented by uh, Kenneth Williams and Barbara Windsor. But you know, I just didn't think it would be fair to include it because it's a compilation. It's not an actual movie. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed the ranking. And yeah, let me know what you think in the comments. Let me know how you'd rank them. You can rank all 30 of them if you like, or just give me a top 10. There's no right or wrong. So yeah, thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Take care.